Hi everyone, this is Katie the Novel Stitcher. It is Saturday, March 9th, and this is Floss Tube 31. This is a channel where I talk all about my love of cross stitching, share my cross stitching with you, my finishes, my whips, my starts, all of the projects, and I also talk about bookish content uh, at the end. So if you're new here, thank you so much for checking out my channel. I hope you'll like what you see. I hope you'll consider subscribing and I hope you'll leave a comment. Let me know who you are, where you're from, what you like to stitch and how you found my channel. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for being with me again. I love chatting with you every two weeks. Sometimes it's the highlight of those two weeks when things are really busy with work and everything. Uh, it's just something I look forward to and something that really brings me a lot of joy and that's because of you all. So thank you so much. And if you commented on my last video, I did a floss tube extra last weekend. I am starting a stitching book club. So it's going to be called Pages and Stitches and it'll be every two months. We'll read a book, we'll stitch something, and we'll gather on Zoom and chat about it. So if you want to hear more about that, I will talk about it at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that if you're interested. Uh, and I'll put a timestamp in the description as well in case you don't have time for it today or want to refer back to it. And if you're not interested, totally fine, not everyone's a reader, uh, but I just like to share uh, that hobby and that passion as well. So we'll get right into the stitching though. I have a lot to share with you. I have two fully finished objects. I have one finished project, I have a start, and I have three whips. So a lot of stitching in the past couple weeks. The weather in Pennsylvania has been up and down as March tends to be, coming in like a bit of a lion this year. Um, lots of rain, today is very rainy and cloudy, and we're gonna get some storms tonight. So a good day to stay in and stitch and chat with all of you. So let's dive in. So the first thing I have, or the first fully finished object, is a pattern you haven't seen in a while. I finished stitching this over the summer, and this is Home Sweet Home by Teresa Kogut. And I'm gonna try to avoid the glare from both the window and that light up there, because I do have the light on, just because it's so dark out today. But this is stitched on a 32 count Dove Lugana, uh, using two over two Teresa Kogut's called for DMC, except I lightened the yellow on the B-skip and around the border, she had a bit more of a brown tone. Um, and I went, oh, sorry, a bit more gold. And I think it came out really cute. Just a regular white frame that I got from Michaels. I thought that would be like the best option to just keep this one pretty simple. And I already knew where I was gonna hang it, which is why it took me a little bit of time to frame it because I wanted to make sure I got the right size frame, which this one I think is eight by 10. So it's, I didn't wanna get a custom frame. So there is a quite a bit of a fabric border, but I think it looks good. I'm gonna try to see, like hold it like that. Um, but I think it turned out really well. And there's a spot in our laundry room where you come in the door and there's a coat rack and right above the coat rack, the former owners had something hanging there. So there's already a nail in place. So I just need to pop this on the wall and I think it'll look pretty there. The walls in the laundry room are like a grayish blue. So I think with the white frame and this blue fabric, it's just gonna fit right in and gonna look really pretty in our laundry room. So I'm really excited to hang this up and to see it when I come in the house every day. I don't have a ton of stitching hanging up right now, so it's pretty exciting to get things done and start displaying it around the house. And I forgot to mention, I got this pattern as part of Teresa Kogut's Patreon over the summer, but it is now available in her new spring book of patterns that came out at market the other week. So if you really like this pattern and are interested, uh, you can get it in her spring book. I think you can probably also still get it through her Patreon. You would need to join the Patreon. And then I think it would probably still be in her secret shop, uh, which then you would pay for it. So, but I love it. I love Teresa Kogut. I feel like I'm in my Teresa Kogut era. I'm stitching quite a lot of her stuff. And every time she releases new patterns, I want to stitch them right away. Um, but I'm really happy to have this one done and be able to display it. So that is home sweet home. And then the other fully finished object is one you have seen just the other week, and it is Wizard of Oz by The Little Stitcher. This one is stitched on a 36 count milk and honey by Fiber on a Whim using her called for DMC. Little Stitcher can be found on Etsy. She has an Etsy, Etsy shop with a lot of really cute patterns. And I framed it in this. I think I got it at 
Hobby Lobby, probably. I don't go to Hobby Lobby much, but I did find myself there at one point um, and picked this up on sale. And I think the sunflowers might be from there or Joann's. But I was thinking of framing this and then I remembered that I had this. It's the perfect size. The gingham is already, um, was already there. It's a picture frame. There was like a little um, clip where you could hang a picture and it has the easel in the back. Um, so I didn't have to add that backing fabric. I thought it would match perfectly with this and then realized I had the sunflowers to go across the top to kind of match the flowers that are in the pattern. And I just love how it came out. And so for this, I use just matte board and glue. For Home Sweet Home, I did matte board, but I laced it. I'm still trying to figure out what my favorite technique for finishing is. I have not tried pinning, which I think I might like. Um, but I'm just trying to figure out what's the best for me and what's the easiest. Let me know what you do, what's your favorite finishing technique, um, because the glue gets messy and obviously it's, it's not as easy to manipulate it to get it straight when you're gluing. Um, lacing can be like a little bit tedious, I think, in my opinion, but I think you can kind of get it a little more straight, though I still struggle with getting it straight. Uh, so let me know what you like to do and let me know how you like to finish things. Do you do something like this? Do you just frame most of your stuff? Do you make it into pillows? That is definitely a goal of mine before the end of the year is to learn how to use a sewing machine to actually get a sewing machine, which I think I'm going to ask for for my birthday. Hint, hint, Alex. I don't know. He doesn't normally watch the entire video. He'll watch like the first couple minutes, but um, I'll just tell him I want the sewing machine over the summer. My birthday's in September, but that is what I want for my birthday. And so I'll hopefully be able to take some classes or just watch YouTube videos and learn how to sew and begin to start to make pillows, which would be a lot of fun. But so far, mostly I just have framed things or done something more like this using things you can get at like Michael's or Joann's or Hobby Lobby if you do shop there um, that you can just kind of repurpose uh, to use for stitching, which gets uh, a different kind of creative juices flowing for me, which is a lot of fun. So that is The Wizard of Oz by The Little Stitcher. And I think it's really cute. I'll probably put it in my office uh, at home, either on the bookshelf or there's like another shelf in there that I'll put it on for now. That shelf will be coming down, but for now I'll put stuff on it. And so that's that one. And I'll probably have some pictures at the beginning of this of like where I am displaying these finishes. And then the next thing I have to share is uh, just a regular finish. And you've seen this one a lot, probably one of my favorite stitches. And this is Teresa Kogitz, uh, Whimsy Witches, Angry House. So she's done and she's so cute. I just love her. She's like one of my favorites. Now I want it to be Halloween just so I can finish her and put her up. She is stitched on 36 count cappuccino by Fiber on a Whim. I don't think that's the called for, but that's what I used. I did use most of the called for DMC, except her dress is in Argyle Socks by Classic Colorworks, a blend of purple and gray. I think you can see it pretty well there. Um, Teresa Kogut had called for, I think, Weeks Dye Works Gray, uh, and I wanted to do more of a purpley because to me that's really Halloween. I struggle with the cat a little. I think I fudged him a bit, but he worked out okay. And I think it's just super, super cute. I love Teresa Kogut. Um, and I'm going to wait to finish this until Halloween so I can go to the store when all of the Halloween goodies are out and think of a fun way to finish her. And the reason her house is angry, I like that Teresa Kogut tells stories with some of her stitches and the house is angry because she gets to go out and go trick-or-treating with her cat friend and the house has to stay home and deal with the trick-or-treaters. So he's kind of miffed that he doesn't get to go out and go trick-or-treating and she gets to have fun. But like, look at her. She totally deserves to go out and have fun. So the house just has to kind of deal. But that's all done. And I can't wait to finish her and put her up for Halloween. She's so cute. I really recommend this one. I brought her to stitch. Um, I went to a stitching retreat in October in Philly. I'm going again this year. And uh, so I was stitching her at the retreat. It's like, it was like right before Halloween. It's the last weekend in October. So the perfect time to be working on a Halloween stitch. And everyone was saying how cute she was and how much they liked it. And I don't know that I've seen anyone else, at least on Flosstube or really on Instagram stitching this one. 
So if you like Halloween, it this was such a pleasurable stitch. She's so cute. It was so much fun. It's not hard. So highly, highly recommend uh, anyone who wants to stitch that one. I'd love to see other people stitching her and bringing her to life. So that is all my finished things. So next I have a new start. I wasn't necessarily planning on starting something new, but I feel like most of the time when you do start something new, it's not, you kind of just feel it. Um, and so this was not planned. But I saw a lot of people doing um, leap day starts. And some people were doing like start something really big and finish it within the four years before the next leap day. I definitely do not need any more big projects right now. I have a lot going that I haven't made as much progress on as I liked, but I like the idea of doing a leap day stitch and Chris the Camping Stitcher was doing like a little stitch along where you just start anything you want um, just because you get an extra day in the year. So you might as well start something new. And the other week, Alex and I went to Barnes Noble, which is my happy place. And um, I wandered over to the magazine section and I got the spring issue of Just Cross Stitch. And I always buy magazines or have like a subscription to uh, Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher. I think that's what it's called. And I never actually stitch anything from it. And I really need to be better about that, especially because a lot of the magazines or Punch Needle and Primitive have smaller patterns. So they're much more manageable. They're not usually very big ones. So, and I picked up this magazine because it actually has some really cute patterns. I've heard that Just Cross Stitch is trying to kind of revamp a little, do something, do some different things, get some maybe newer designers or more modern designers in. And so I picked all things spring. And, and this is Erin Elizabeth Designs, who I'm sure many of you heard of. I don't have any like really small spring ones besides my, um, berry patch with the bunny that I did last year. I'll show you guys that one next week um, or maybe put a photo in the beginning because I did put that one on display. I love that finish. It's one of my favorite finishes. But anyway, I just thought this was cute, simple, perfect for the spring. And so I decided to start that on leap day. I wanted to be stitching something springy at this time of year. And I decided to kind of um, didn't go really crazy with the colors, but I just really switched it up. So I decided to do it on a purpley gray fabric from XJU Designs. I've not stitched on her fabric, but I'm really liking it. It's really, really lovely. This is a 40 count. It's called My Little Dove. Might be coming out a little more gray and a little less purple on the screen here for me. Um, but it really is a really nice purpley gray. Really beautiful for spring. I'll zoom in a little because it is kind of hard to see on the 40 count. And yeah, it does pop in real life. Like when I hold it back here, it's like you can't even see it. But it's because it's tiny. Tiny little stitches. And so that is my start. And I'm loving stitching on this. So that's like pretty good progress for only having started it um, like seven or eight days ago. And so I'm kind of switching up the colors because I am using Classic Color Works. So a bit of my own conversion, but not totally different from what the pattern has. Um, but I have a good collection of classic color works and I really want to be able to start using them and really making it worth um, my subscription. I have a Fat Quarter Shop Floss Fix subscription where I get, I think it's six strands or skeins, I mean, six skeins of classic color works a month. So I have a huge selection now um, and I really need to use them to make it, you know, reasonable but to keep on to keep this subscription going and keep getting new colors and so I can show you the colors I'm using for there's not a ton of yellow I think I added a couple yellow flowers because she has some pink ones and I just wanted to go with some more yellow in the pattern so that's cottage daisies really beautiful um cool azul I'm doing the birdhouse which she's using more um teal or turquoise kind of colors and I decided to go more blue so cool azul and I don't have the card for this it's a little messy but this is cloud it's like a lighter blue and so again those two colors are uh, the birdhouse so I think that like turned out really pretty um there's some gray in it so I'm gonna use bakington 
And I don't need to go through like all the colors because there's actually quite a lot of colors in this pattern, which you wouldn't think because it's so small, but Creeping Jenny, Clay Pot, Chai, and then other just pinks and browns, peaches and pinks and uh, Eve's leaves, another light green. So all the colors, quite a lot of very, very springy, bright colors I chose for this one. And it was fun to go through all of my classic color works, pick out what was gonna work best and what would what would work on this um, purpley flap fabric and, and pop and show up. I think this is gonna be so cute. Really fun stitch. And I like her like designers like this use of like shadowing and stuff. I haven't quite stitched anything that like uses that technique, which if you are picking your own colors, you do have to be careful because this, brown here i chose a color that was like they just didn't quite work to have like a shadow effect they were two different shades of brown um so just you know if you do pick your own colors when you have this kind of shading just be careful that the colors actually like make it give you that effect and don't take away from that effect so i would recommend this magazine um i did not like bookmark other designs i liked but this like red barn samplers. There's like a cute sampler. That's really sweet. I don't have any like really teeny samplers. So that's like a cute one. They're doing this hummingbird garden um, stitch along. So every magazine will have one of these released, um, I think, or three. This one has three. There'll be 12. So maybe this one has just a couple or maybe other, I don't know. Anyway, regardless, you can do those. Those are cute. And like, you could just do one, you know, individually. Um, what else? There was one more that I liked. Was it toward the beginning? Oh, it was this one though. There are a lot of specialty stitches in this one, but I thought this was really pretty. Blossom by blossom, the spring begins with those pretty flowers. Um, but yeah, lots of specialty stitches in that one. So I wasn't quite ready to tackle that yet. But I recommend it if you want to pick up a magazine and you like flowery and spring patterns and maybe you haven't picked up just cross stitch in a while. Um, they're kind of revamping things and I think they're doing a really nice job with what they have. And so my next whip, I didn't make as much progress on this one. I really need to get back to it. I would say with this one and it's Hometown by Teresa Kogut, um, it's going to be a lot of houses and it's a lot of stitching on houses and maybe a lot of people love stitching houses and maybe i don't <laughs> love them as much i don't mind them but i don't love them as much it's just when you're just stitching big blocks um it's just not as not as fun but i mean i do think it's going to be really cute and i even looking here i'm like this is going to come out so nice and it's going to be so tiny but big because it's a big pattern, but I'm using 40 count, so tiny stitches. So this is Teresa Kogut's Hometown Sal. It's a stitch along through her Patreon, so you have to be a Patreon member, tier four. Um, she's releasing a new part every month for two years, which is a long time, but it's a big pattern and she wanted the sections to be manageable, which they are. I just stitched too, on too many other things, so I'm not really making a ton of progress. Um, she releases the new parts on the 15th of each month. So I'm hoping by the 15th, it's really not gonna happen. Maybe by the end of the month, I wanna at least have part one and half of part two done. I'm not even done with part one, but this is gonna be an antique shop, I think. So I've got the willow tree done, 40 count platinum, just regular linen, um, and some of the house done, that blue up there, up here. Here is going to be another bird, and and that's the progress so far. Oh, and I don't know if I left enough time to show, so I'm gonna show again, like that's part one and two. And so here's what I have done. And I like, I mean, stitching on this 40 count is fine, just a platinum, so it's really easy to stitch on for the most part, not too hard to see. Um, I just need to spend more time. I think also it's just this house and it's gonna work well with all the other colors of the houses, but it's just like a boring kind of brownish color. Um, I think there's another house that's like blue or building, I guess they're not all houses, they're buildings or shops, but it'll be really cute. So I just gotta keep 
plugging away and uh, get this Willow Antique Shop done and move on to the next section. So hopefully I said everything I was supposed to about this one. DMC, one over two. I do one over two for everything 36 count and above and two over two, 32 count and down. So mostly right now I got a lot of one over two because I'm just into stitching on the higher counts. That doesn't mean that you have to. If it's hard for you, stitch what you like, stitch what you love. I do still have things on Ada and Lugana, but I'm just mostly stitching on linen these days. So yeah, so it was a start, a whip, and I have two more whips. So my next whip is Lucky. This is by the camping stitcher, Chris. She started designing, I think last year, and has some really cute patterns out. This is my first foray into 46 count. I'm not finding it too bad. Um, this is just a white Bergen linen. That might be part of the reason. I don't know if I could stitch 46 count on like a darker fabric, but this is pretty easy and I'm not struggling too much. I'd say the only thing is, and if you stitch on 46 or higher, let me know what needle do you use? Because I'm using a 28, but even that I find a little thick. I like um, tapestry. I think they're a little more pointy. So I think that has been helping to switch over from, I have some John James and some DMC needles, and I think I like tapestry the best. One thing that I do is I just throw my needles all around. So now I don't know which is which. Um, so I do have a um, pack of tapestry that have a few left. And I'm almost wondering if I should just like put the needle back into the package. So I remember if you have any tips on organizing your needles so that you know which is which, let me know. But anyway, that's my progress so far. I think since you last I saw it, since last you saw it, I think I finished this clover, finished the U, and did the C, and the little motif under the C. So it's gonna be so cute when it's done. I think I have one more clover on this side, and that will be how long it is. So, and I have tiny hands. So it's gonna be tiny, and it's gonna be super cute for St. Patrick's Day, and I do have a goal to finish this by the end of the month. We shall see but that is a goal. Not for St. Patrick's Day, unfortunately, but maybe by the end of the month. So I gotta get working on this one. Um, and I am doing, I'm not using her called for, so I am again trying to dig into my stash of classic color works. So I'm using three different classic color work shades of green, desert mesquite, mistletoe, and this one was chop drives. So I'm using those beautifully variegated, very pretty greens on this one. So, and St. Patrick's Day this year is a Sunday. So this will be my St. Patrick's Day Sunday stitch for sure. And then my last whip, yes, last stitching <laughs> is Oh Joyous Day. I want to finish this one. It's going to take a while, but I've been working on this for a while. And I really want to make some really dedicated progress. So my next goal, I keep saying I want to finish things by the end of the month. And like time just is weird lately and goes by really slow and really fast at the same time. So I'm realizing it's March 9th. And so the end of the month isn't really that far away. Luckily March has 31 days, but still. I do want to finish the house by the end of the month. That's not gonna happen. I don't even know what I'm thinking. I think I wanna finish like everything around the house. That's more doable by the end of the month. And maybe start, maybe do the roof. Let's do that. We're gonna finish, he's almost done. We're gonna finish this, this stuff, and we're gonna do the roof. So that's my goal. So we'll see. But I'm doing this on my favorite fabric, which is 36 count Steinbeck by Needle and Flex. Obviously, again, one over two because this is 36 count and I am using called for DMC and fancy floss. Um, I do like that blackboard designs and this pattern tells you which parts you can do just in DMC because they're just a little bit. And so I'm kind of just doing both to save on costs a little. But last time you saw it, only a little bit of the bird was done and he is so close to being finished. Would have loved to have him finished for you today, but it didn't happen because I decided to do a new start and start a book club and <laughs> do all these other things. But he's looking great. 
And that green down there at the bottom near his tail is actually um, not the called for because for some reason I think the called for is Weeks Dyework Sage and I swear I have it somewhere. I do not know where it is. And so I went with Classic Colorworks Avocado. At first I was worried it would be a little too bright, but I actually think that it looks good. So um, these colors are brighter than they look on the pattern, but I love that. I like, um, they're bright but muted, which I really love. Um, I think the colors in this are just absolutely beautiful. I love stitching on this. He was a lot of fun to do just with those blues um, and the teal and like he just came together. It's so cool to see like something like that come together because at first you're just stitching in and it looks like kind of like a bird but not really and now he really looks like a bird except he doesn't have legs so he needs to have his legs so I think tonight I will make sure to get his legs in because I feel bad that he doesn't have any legs to stand on and he's got to get his tail filled in there so loving this one and really really got to get moving on this one because I haven't really finished like a big sampler or one of these bigger ones on the nicer fabric and all of this and so of all the ones I'm working on this is probably the one I'm closest to being finished. I was originally planning on doing Winter Rose Manor by Brenda Gervais and finishing that by the end of like this month or next month but I'm really into like the flowers in the spring so Winter Rose will be put on hiatus for now but it'll come back out but really want to get moving on that one. So lots to stitch and lots to do and I had a lot to share. And I think that's it for the stitching. Um, no haul, trying to be good when it comes to the haul, though I do have my market order coming probably this week, I think. Um, the shipping label from Top Knot has been created. So I'm guessing she's gonna get that into the mail if she hasn't already today on Monday. And so that'll be hopefully coming my way next week but I'm probably not gonna start anything until April because I've been doing my two finishes equals a start. And so right now I'm out of the ability to start anything if I stick to my plans, um, but I get a freebie start each quarter. Uh, and so April will start Q2. And so then I can stitch something which will probably be whatever I choose to stitch for our Stitches and Pages book club. Um, life updates. Not much to share. Alex is working, it's tax season. Work has been really busy for me. So it's nice to come home and hang out with him for a little bit and then he goes and works a little and I stitch. Again, it's rainy today, wanting it to be spring and warm. Last Sunday it was like sunny and almost 70 and like that's the weather I thrive in. I am happiest when it's sunny and warm. I don't mind the heat, I love the summer. Um, I still say fall is my favorite season, but more and more I'm liking the summer. I just like to be warm and sunny and no snow and no cold and no hats and gloves and mittens and coats. So the rain is not fun, but I know the spring rain brings the flowers and this will be our first spring in the house. So I'm thinking of uh, what I want to plant outside and gardening and putting some flowers and pots of flowers and really making it pretty outside. Uh, we don't have any patio furniture yet or a grill, so that will be a goal for the spring. Save our pennies and uh, buy some nice patio furniture and a grill. Hoping to have my niece's first birthday party here. She was born in July, so we're hoping everybody will want to come here and we can, some of our family haven't seen the house, so we'll have a little housewarming. Uh, slash birthday party. Uh, so that should be fun. So hopefully that works out and we get good weather and we can get the patio looking in good shape um, for that celebration. So yeah, I think that's all for life updates. Um, oh, I do have two floss tubes I was going to recommend. So I'm not watching anyone new, um, but I have two people that I love to watch regularly. So the first one is Lala D Stitches. And that's Laura, and I think she just put out a new video yesterday or today, so I need to tune into that. But she's just such a pleasant one to watch. She's very positive. She's a very happy demeanor. She's very cheerful. She has a really wide selection of things that she stitches. I really like the vari variety that she has. Um, I think her stitching is beautiful and her fabric choices are always fun. She gets really creative with her colors. 
and I, she's just like a happy one to watch. If you are having a rainy day and you need a little sunshine, I feel like Laura is the one to watch for that. So highly recommend Lala D Stitches. I'll link her in this next one below. And the other one is the Sable Stitchers, S-A-B-L-E, Stash Accumulated Before Life Expectancy, something like that. Basically saying like you get more stitchy stuff than you could ever stitch in your lifetime, but that's what we do. Um, so the Sable Stitchers are Roberta and Linny, and they are just two friends, and they get together at, I think, Roberta's house and show off beautiful stitching. I always like have a ton of patterns to show, some that I've seen, some that I've never seen. Their stitching is always just great and they have such a good friendship and back and forth and they make me laugh and Linny likes to tell jokes and Roberta just got a new cat and they just feel like friends. Um, so it's really fun to just sit with them and stitch and listen to their chatter and see their wonderful stitching. So check those two out if you haven't. I think I've suggested them before but I felt like they were worth uh, repeating. So I think that's it for the stitching. So if you're only here for that and not the bookish stuff, totally fine. I hope you have a wonderful week. What are you stitching on? Are you headfirst into spring stitching? Uh, what are you looking forward to stitching in the months to come? And just tell me how you're doing, how's life? I hope you're having a good start to, it's not quite spring, but I wanna say the spring since it's March, but I hope March is going well for you. And please stop by and leave me a comment and uh, have a chat with me. And so let's get into the bookish content. So first I'm gonna give a book recommendation and then we'll talk about the book club. So I did just this morning while I was vacuuming, cause like my new thing is to listen to audiobooks while I clean, which has been really a great way to listen to audiobooks. Cause that's like the one time where like my mind doesn't wander too much while I clean and I can really actually tune in and listen to a book. And so I finished West with Giraffes. I'll put the picture of the cover page or the book here. Uh, this is by Linda Rutledge. I listened again to the audiobook. Um, it was narrated by like a gruffy old man type. Um, it was really, really good. This is like five stars for me, um, which is probably a little tough with audiobooks since I don't do audiobooks too much. Um, but I loved this story. Giraffes are my favorite animal, so that already kind of hooked me from the start. I thought this was a little bit more true to story, but it's a bit more fictionalized. But basically the true part of the story is at, at the onset of World War II, um, giraffes were shipped over from Africa, two of them to go to the San Diego Zoo. And while they were en route um, over the ocean, a hurricane hit. A lot of the crew on the ship died, but miraculously the two giraffes survived, made it to New York Harbor. Um, one was injured and they had to pretty quickly get them to San Diego by road before like major highways had been built um, through, you know, the entirety pretty much of, a, well, yeah, pretty much through the entirety of America. Um, they drove across country and I haven't like Googled um, like the, the, the newspaper clippings and like photos but there were journalists who took photos and newspapers that covered it because you know you could just be sitting out on your porch and like this truck with two giraffes in it like drives by because they're trying to get them um to san diego and they're just driving you know on regular roads where people live and stuff like that so i want to google it and like look at the actual news coverage um from the time but basically, Linda took that story of the giraffes getting over here and traveling across the country and created a character named Woody, who was hit hard by the Dust Bowl in Oklahoma and came to New York with his cousin. And then the hurricane happened and he's just really a rough family history. His parents are gone. He's like 17 or 18, maybe 18 or 19 in the book. Um, and it switches between past and, and present where he's writing the story down. So he's a made up character it seems, but basically falls on hard times in New York. Cousin ends up dying in the hurricane and he's got to figure out like, what am I doing with my life? What do I do with myself? He sees these giraffes and he's like, I need to, I need to go with these giraffes. Like this is amazing. And he ends up getting chosen to drive the giraffes across the country after the initial driver who actually has the experience to do this. Um, uh, ends up not wanting to. And so it's the story of Woody and his travels across the country with the 
man who was kind of in charge of the giraffes and getting them safely to San Diego, who's like an older man and kind of gruff and rough around the edges. So it's Woody's relationship with him. And then there's a young woman, again, a made up character with bright red hair named Augusta, and she wants to be a photographer. And so she's taking pictures and following them around. And there's a story with her and Woody and kind of a little bit of a romance friendship thing going on with them. And it's just, it was wonderfully told. It felt really all true, even though some of it or a good bit of it is fictionalized. And I love giraffes, so I love the, you know, descriptions of the giraffes and the adventures and yeah. I really like that one. I would highly recommend that one. There's some hard parts and some sad parts. Um, so it's not a, it's, it's not a happy read, but it's not a, like there's the shop. It's, it's got everything. It's got the adventure. It's got sad parts. It's got hard parts. It's got the really happy, fun parts. It's got funny parts. So I think it has a little bit of everything. So I really like that one. So that is my one recommendation. And then let's talk about the book club. So thank you for your interest. Thank you for your comments. Some people left suggestions of what books we could possibly read. And so everybody seems into it. So obviously we're gonna do it. Um, pages and stitches, or did I say stitches and pages? See, I can't decide which to do. Stitches and pages or pages and stitches. I think I like stitches and pages better. So that's what we're gonna go with. So stitches and pages is officially a go. And so what we're gonna do is to start Today we are going to vote on what book we want to read and then we will start the book on April 1st and we'll have all of April and all of May and then at the end of May or possibly a little bit before the end of May we will get together to discuss the book. We'll figure out timing when we get closer. I know that we're heading into Memorial Day at the end of May so I have to figure out what works for everyone um, as we get into the summer and holidays and things like that. But I think two months or at least close to two months will give everybody the time they need to read the book that we pick and everyone likes Zoom. So we will do it via Zoom. Um, and yeah, so um, also like for what you want to stitch. So we'll start reading it in, on April 1st or, you know, you don't have to start if you don't start on April 1st. Like the, the rules with this are really loosey goosey. Like the hard and fast rules are read the same book as everyone that's a book club i mean you can go off and read a different book but you won't be able to talk about the book we're reading if we're not all reading the same book uh and you got two months to read it and if you don't finish it in two months just you know don't come to the zoom or come to the zoom just know we're going to talk about the whole book so really like nothing stressful about this nothing to you know, no, you know, you don't have to keep up with the book at a certain pace or cadence. You can read it any way you want, audiobook, ebook, library, buy it, whatever works for you. Um, and so, yeah. Um, and stitching, again, like stitch what you want, like start what you want with starting the book. Um, I'm gonna see what book we end up picking and decide do I stitch something themed to the book or do I stitch whatever. Um, and a lot of you had different suggestions for how you could kind of like tie everything in. You could stitch something where the name of the designer has the first letter of the last name of the name of the author of the book we read. Or I was thinking, say there's a certain motif or design or color of the cover of the book. You could take that and be like, okay, the, you know, the book has this beautiful blue. I'm going to find a pattern with that blue color or flowers or whatever, or you could theme it to the book. So if the book is history, you could stitch something historic. If the book is fantasy, you could stitch something fantastical. So there's a lot of ways to kind of do it. Um, so however works for you works for me and you do not have to start something if you don't want, you can do a whip and you can do the same thing with the whip. You can find a whip that kind of ties to the book somehow, ties to the cover, you know, again, designer name or the name of the pattern has letters that are in the name of the book or a word that's in the name of the book, any of those kind of things. Have fun with it. Let me know what you decide to do. But let's dive into our selection. And all you need to do is in your normal comment or in a comment on its own, just tell me which book of these you want to read. Uh, and I'm going to give you three options. Please just pick one. It'll make it easier if you just pick one that you think you're most interested in. 
I'll see which one gets the most votes and that's what we'll read. Not everyone is gonna love the book we decide. I'm hoping at least one of these will appeal to you in general. Everyone has a different taste in what they like to read. Everyone has a different taste in um, the genre, the topic, all of that. So I'm gonna try to be as fair as I can, but you cannot always please everyone. I think there's at least 50 or 60 of you who are interested in this. It's a lot of people to find one book that every single one of you is going to be like, yes, I want to read this and yes, I'm going to like this. So we're going to do our best. And if the book we pick is just not up your alley, wait a couple months and we'll do it again. And I'm going to try to make sure we're mixing up genres and authors and being diverse and all of that. So um, hopefully if there's nothing that appeals to you this go around, we'll, we'll get to something different next time and you'll be able to join in for the next one. So... Um, two of these suggestions were in the comments a lot, um, or at least a few times. Not everyone gave suggestions, which is fine. Um, it's hard to think off the top of your head what book would be good for a book club. And then another one is actually a book I bought recently that I'm interested in, so that's why I threw it in there. So I'll put the covers. I'm going to give a really brief synopsis. I recommend that you, if you want to know more, just Google it. Go on Goodreads, Amazon if you're an Amazon person. I personally use Storygraph. Storygraph is an app, much like Goodreads, where you track your reading and it has all the books. It's, it's basically the same as Goodreads. It's just an independent book lover led app, which I like better than a large corporation led app. And I like Storygraph because it gives you a lot more data and information around the books. So check that out if you want. It's in the app store, probably for iPhone and Android, or just Google the book title and learn a little more because um, these are just going to be high level. So the first one that was recommended is A Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier. Um, and I'm going to tell you the page, the page count just in case it matters. I'm trying to do books under 500 to make them more manageable. So this one's only 336 pages. It's um, coined as on story graph reflective, emotional, hopeful. And so A Single Thread is set right after or a little bit after World War I. It's set in England. It's about a young woman named Violet who moves to the town of Winchester. Um, when she moves there, she is she's single. She's drawn into a group of broiderers, which are women who embroider kneelers for the church. There's a famous church there. And through getting involved in this community, she makes friends and has a friendship and um, connections through art and through, you know, female friendships and that kind of thing. But then she also faces challenges um, just within that community, within her own life as a single woman and with World War II um, kind of knocking at the door um, not so long after World War I and, and, and that kind of time period uh, and that kind of theme, historical fiction female friendships um, and discovering yourself, finding yourself and going through hard times and that kind of thing. So that one sounds really cute. I've not read it, but the cover looks familiar to me and the covers will all be right here. So I've definitely seen this one around. So that's the first choice, a single thread. Put that in the comments if that's the one you're interested in. The next one, um, quite a few people recommended this. This is what I would call the book of the month or the book of the moment. This is The Women by Kristen Hanna. This one is the longest, it's 471 pages. This one is set in the 1960s. It's about a one, it's definitely hardcore historical fiction. It's about a woman named Frankie and she joins the Army Nurse Corps. And it's the untold story of kind of women in war, women in Vietnam, which you really only hear about the sacrifices and the experience of the soldiers, the male men who um, fought in Vietnam and kind of also touches on the aftermath of coming home um, and the controversy around, you know, how people felt about the war in Vietnam, how, you know, how they received these soldiers and also these Army Nurse Corps um, women when they came back and what they thought of, of the war itself. Um, and it's um, put as emotional, sad, inspiring, and informative. A lot of what I've heard is like, you don't, again, really hear about the story of women um, fighting, or not fighting, because they're in the nurse corps, but women going to Vietnam and being part of the war effort. Um, it's really a lot about the experiences of the male soldiers. So this really kind of shines a light on the women's experience as well. Um, I've read Kristen Hanna before. I will say 
and I think I've heard about this one, her stuff can be very heavy. So this one probably has a lot of sad parts, a lot of serious parts. Um, it's about war. There might be some lightness to it or a little bit of romance, but from what I've read of Kristen Hannah, her stuff can be pretty serious and pretty heavy. Um, so just keep that in mind if that's something you like or don't like. But um, I think her writing is great and I love historical fiction and untold stories of women in historical times. So not that the 60s was that long ago. My parents were around for Vietnam, but and of course they're still alive. But my parents have told me stories about their feelings on the war and, and they were in college during a lot of it and just how they felt um, with everything that was going on. Um, so that one's supposed to be really good and everyone's reading it these days. So definitely a possibility. So if you like the women, I mean, I'll be reading it regardless. So uh, let me know if that one sounds interesting to you. Certainly seems like one that would lead to a lot of discussion. And then the last one, this one I picked because it just sounds interesting and I had picked it up at the bookstore the other week. This one is 335 pages and it is Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ng. Um, it is about a 12 year old boy named Bird Gardner. He lives with his father who works at a library at a university and Bird's mother left when he was nine years old. She just kind of left without a trace. Don't know what happened to her. Don't know where she went. Um, she was a poet or, or is a poet. We don't know what happened to her. So we don't know if she's still alive or not. Um, but her books were banned and he doesn't know why her books were banned or what happened to her or any of that. And at some point he gets a mysterious letter um, with some cryptic information about her. And so he goes on a quest to find her. And so this is um, touted as thought provoking, emotional, a little bit dark, um, a little bit of like the history of how um, I think Chinese Americans were treated and stuff like that. But this one sounds really good. And I've read some of her other books and enjoyed them. So she's got a really lovely writing style. So that is Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ng. So those are your choices. A Single Thread by Tracy Chavel Chavalier, The Women by Kristen Hanna, and Our Missing Hearts by Celeste Ng. So hopefully one of those appeals to you. They are all female authors. I tend to read more female authors than male authors. Not that there's anything wrong with us reading something by a man, but I just tend to, to go toward the female voice, and I'm assuming Tracy Chavalier is white, Kristen Hanna is white, and Celeste Ng is Chinese, um, or Chinese American. So um, those are the books. Let me know what you're interested in reading. I will probably tally the results. I will put them on Instagram first, only because that's like the most immediate and accessible channel, but don't worry if you don't have Instagram. There will be other ways to interact and do things throughout this that do not involve Instagram because I know not everybody is on it. But once I tally the results, I'll post it on Instagram just so anyone who is on Instagram can go out and get the book if they're interested. I will also put like, you can put a note or a, just a post in YouTube. Um, I think it would just pop up in like your subscriptions feed. So I'll put a post and let everyone know which book won. And then I'll, of course, announce it in my video in two weeks, which is the 23rd or 24th, excuse me, whatever weekend um, is in two weeks. I think it's 23rd or 24th, that Saturday or Sunday. I'll film my regular floss tube. And once again, at the end of the video, I will let you know about the book club and what book. And then once I announce the book, everybody can go out and get it, start reading it, um, figure out what you want to stitch. And then we can kind of share via email, via Instagram, all of that. And then I will set up the Zoom calls and provide more information about us actually getting together uh, once we get closer to the end of May. So cool, here we go, I'm excited. And this is a learning for me, um, never done this before. So forgive me, um, you know, as we go through this and we figure out what works and what doesn't work. Um, and. Uh, if there's other kinds of books you read and these ones aren't up your alley, I, I get it. Um, these are the ones that I just kind of chose for this go around and we can try other things um, next time, try some different genres, but hopefully one of these books will appeal to you and you can let me know what you want to read or, you know, you can hold off and see how things go this go around and, and join in for the next one. So, okay, I think that's everything. So thank you 
for joining with me, especially with if you've been here until the end, almost an hour. Uh, just chat me, leave me a comment, let me know how things are going. Follow me on Instagram, novel underscore stitcher. And I hope you all have a wonderful day and happy stitching, happy reading. Bye everyone.